All right, so I started looking at the spawning mechanics a couple months ago. I really wanted to know how to accurately calculate spawning distance in game. I also wanted to know in certain scenarios why I got spotted or why I didn't spot an enemy tank. We're gonna have some pretty good videos on this topic, but the problem is the information they give in those videos really just isn't gonna be used by most people in any meaningful capacity in game. I'm gonna go over a couple of the most important things before the rest of the video. There are seven checkpoints in every tank. They're middle middle on all four sides. So we want about here, 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 here. And there's also one on the top of the turret at the max elevation, which is about here. There's one where the gun meets the turret, which would be right about here in the mantlet. And there's also a seventh dynamic one in the same place as this one, but it's dynamic, so it's going to move with the turret. On top of this, there are two V-range ports. There's a static one, also at the top, highest elevation of the turret, and there's one where the gun meets the turret. But this one is dynamic. This one also moves with the turret. That's why, if you've ever heard anybody talk about spotting with your mantlet, that's why this works. And for the checkpoints, the one with the lowest camo value is going to be used. So if you have one checkpoint sticking out of a bush or behind a or outside of a corner, then that is going to be used. That's why you're going to get spotted. If you're not fully in a bush or you peek around a corner or something like that. This is why if someone's ever sticking out of a building, like there's a building right here blocking this side of the tank. That building is going to be blocking both view range boards, but the checkpoint is going to be sticking out the side. So you will be able to spot them no matter what. But if their view range ports are blocked, then they're not going to be able to spot you back. That's why a lot of people get kind of confused and think the spotting mechanics are broken because, oh my god, I can't spot them. But the reality is, your view range ports were blocked, but your checkpoint was not. And they can just shoot you in the back of the tank. That's basically the, the way that works. Alright, so with this information in mind, we can talk about how camouflage and view range interact with each other. So under concealment in your garage, you're going to have some different values. Stationary camo value, moving camo value, and then your camo while firing for both states respectively. You can see here next to it that obviously it's a percentage. Most of the player base will be able to recognize that camo is a percentage, but I don't think they'll really be able to tell you what it's a percentage of. And I think obviously I think most people will, will recognize that it's probably relative to the view range of the tank that's going to be spotting you. And this is mostly accurate, but the one thing that needs to be taken into account is that camo cannot be applied to proxy range. So someone's effective view range against camo. Is going to be their total view range minus 50 which is proxy obviously and this is where camouflage actually comes into effect the camo percentage is directly equivalent to a distance in meters relative to the enemy's view range minus proxy i'll come back to this in a bit and we'll talk about how you can actually use this in game because it's actually pretty useful but first i should talk about how foliage actually works in the game so there are two different types of camo values that foliage can have in game these are 50% and 25%. Usually pretty easy to tell which one is 25%. It's going to be like your dead trees or your tall grass on Mali or the sunflowers that two caps spawn on Murrow, stuff like that. All your standard bushes and drop trees are going to be worth 50%. One thing worth noting is that conifers are always going to be uh, giving you camo. It doesn't matter if you drop them or not because obviously they've got trunk or branches at the bottom of the trunk. And the models, are they're pretty practical. Like There's not going to be any holes in the model or anything. And you basically just use the shape of the tree to cover yourself. Like it's it's not that complicated. And we look at this equation. This is published by Wargaming. This is one of their videos. The consumer value here is going to be your tank's consumer value plus foliage consumer value. So let's say I had 25% camo on my tank. And I'm in a bush with 50%. This is going to be 25 plus 50. However, no matter what, the number that's put into this equation for foliage value cannot exceed 80 which means it is not possible to have more than 80% consumer value from foliage alone. All right, so I think this is a good point to talk about CVS briefly. Um, the percentages you see here for CVS, the 20% uh, behind foliage, 12.5% moving, this, these percentages are not equal to these percentages. So what this does is... The 20% reduction in foliage camo value is applied to the number that you put in this equation for foliage camo value. So let's say you put in 50% for a bush, you now reduce it by 20%, so it's now 40%, your 25% bushes are now 20%. And but this is this is only if you have one bush or tree being used. And that is what is so interesting about CVS, is it scales with the amount of trees or bushes you're being that are being used. Remember how I said earlier that this is could be maximum. 80% camo for foliage value, well, you're also reducing that by 20%, which means it doesn't matter how many trees or bushes are in between you and another tank. If you have CVS, the maximum camo they could possibly have is 
let's be honest, this is obviously it's boosted by 20%. Uh, but who's bringing unboosted CVS? This also means that one other thing is because it scales this way, if you're playing on a map and you're trying to spot somebody that's only going to be in one bush, um, that means that CVS is just not as effective as optics if you're going to choose between the two. Because the 10% reduction, in, that's like a 50% bush, is going to be equivalent to maybe about 40 meters spotting distance. Which, if you got like a top tier tank, decent crew, whatever, your optics is going to be equivalent, if not greater than that number. And you're also going to get the uh, additional camel reduction if they're not behind foliage and more if they're moving. So the same way that the reduction in foliage camera values applied in this equation, the reduction in moving camera values can be applied the exact same way. Except, you know, obviously it's your tank's moving concealment value. And this is why I kind of think the reduction in moving camera value provided by CVS is really overblown. Because unless you're playing a light tank versus another light tank, then the true reduction in moving camera value is going to be negligible. This is because even for medium tanks that have a lot of camera value while moving, a 12.5% reduction is going to top out at around 4% or maybe even less reduction in actual camo percentage for that tank. This, if we're being generous and assume the light tank has about 550 meters view range, which is about what a fully tricked out manticore would have, then the maximum is going to be about 20 meters difference in actual spotting distance. That's being generous for both the spotting tank's view range and the moving camo of the tank being spotted. For a more realistic scenario, you're looking at somewhere between 0.5% and 3% reduction in actual camo percentage. And on top of that, light tanks are probably going to top out around maybe 500 meters view range, depending on who it is, how they set it up. And if that's the case, then you're looking at more of like a 2 to 14 meter di or difference in actual spotting distance. And this is basically irrelevant unless you're going to stack it on top of the foliage camo reduction. Then it, it obviously makes a bit more of a difference, but really only for light tanks, to be honest. All right, now let's talk about why I actually made this video. And that's how you can use this information in-game. I'm really only talking about tier 10 here, but you can pretty much apply the same numbers to tier 8 and 9, and it's going to work. Generally, people that are setting up a high tier tank are going to be shooting for max range, which is 445 meters. I'll talk about what that actually means later. But it's safe to assume that anything that is not a light tank is usually going to have about 450 meters view range if not lower, depending on how well the player sets up the tank, if they're using food or not, and how good they're crewed. But 450 meters is a pretty safe assumption to make on everything that's not a light tank, and this number is also perfect for working with. Because proxy range is removed before camo is applied, that means that we're working with 400 meters of effective view range. Due to the fact that camouflage and view range are operating on the same plane of existence, camo value is essentially anti-view range. What this means is that the distance between two tanks is directly equivalent to camouflage relative to the view range of the tank doing the spotting. This is why the 400 meters of effective view range is perfect to work with. And what this means is that for an average tank, every 100 meters past proxy is directly equivalent to 25% camo value. Obviously this works for whatever percentage you want, you know, 10% 40 meters, 50% 200 meters. And this is useful because it allows us to quickly determine when we're going to be spotted in game. So what I just said was kind of complicated, so I'm going to give an example. So on my Leopard, I have 26% moving camo. Just round it down to 25%, makes it easier to work with. And I made this. This is not super accurate, but it gets the point across. So this is obviously the proxy ring, which is the radius of 50 meters. This is your max spawning range, 445 meters. And every one of these little rings is about 100 meters past proxy. So let's say there's someone with 440 or 450 meters view range sitting right here. I'm in my Leopard 1. I'm in a standard 50% bush. This guy doesn't have CVS. That means my 25% moving camo plus 50% from the bush plus 25% from him being 150 meters away from me means that there is no chance he can spot me. And that's why this is so effective in game because it literally takes like three seconds to do this calculation. The biggest thing is knowing exactly how far away from you they are. And you can do this by, if they're spotted, just looking at their tank, it's going to be right above your reticle. Or you could press T at a location, it's going to ping the map, you look at the ping. Or you could just straight up control click on the map and ping and look at it. And it allows you to do some pretty cool calculations with this. And you can actually, it, this is actually really effective. Obviously, there's going to be some, some differences depending on if you're playing as a good player or not, but it's pretty effective. So, if there is a tank with 450 meters V range, 
that is sitting on any of these rings, you are inherently going to have the camo value associated with it no matter what. It's not possible for you not to. So, I mean, obviously, there are some exceptions when assuming 450 meters view range for any non light tanks. And I've got a few in my garage, like my patent, 490 meters, um, 1 to 1B, almost 500. But it, it's going to be pretty safe, especially considering most people are not going to be running like bond equipment and food and have like six skill crews. So it, it, is, it is pretty safe to assume 450 meters view range for most tanks. Uh, obviously, I'm talking about tier 10, but this will scale down to lower tiers and it, it will be honestly more effective because lower tier tanks have less view range and so on. This is just kind of my opinion on how to use this effectively. I would personally only be using my moving camera value and I would reduce it to whatever is easier to work with, like maybe 20% if I was playing my 1 to 1B. But the thing is, I would only be using moving camera value because if you get yourself stuck in a position where you're going to get lit if you move, then more often than not, it's going to be a bad time. So I'd also, uh, for like, if I was playing a heavy tank, like, look at these camera values. They're so non-existent that it's just not even worth adding them to the equation i'll, I'll be any heavy tank i'll be playing like i have absolutely no camo at all so i'll talk about assuming 450 meters for non-light tanks for light tanks i would probably be assuming 550 meters just because that's about like the highest you could possibly get on most tanks and it, it's also as easy to work with as 450 is because every 100 meters past proxy instead of 25 percent camo it's just gonna be equivalent to 20 percent camo these are going to be increments of 20, like 20, 40, 60, 80. And it's just, it's just as easy to work with. But you should, you should keep in mind the CVS camo values. Or the CVS foliage values, I should say. So if I was playing against a tank that I am pretty sure has CVS, then I would be playing a standard bush like it's 40% and so on. Like, it's pretty obvious. All right, so now for an in-game example. So I recorded this video from a few days ago. Like this plate, don't get me wrong, it's it's pretty useless, but it's a good example of what I'm talking about. So I'm in my EBR on Lakeville. I try to go valley to try and light an RD that was maybe crossing K1 and pick it early. It didn't happen. And I was too lazy to go back mid. So I came and sat up here. I was thinking, you know, maybe I could spot anything that peaks this bush for my platoon mate that's an A1. And I keep I have low noise in this game, so my EBR has just under 53% camo. So, with what I was talking about in mind, I ping the ridge, and I look at it. It says 210 meters. So, I know, that because I have about 53% camo, and I'm assuming these people are going to have 450 meters view range, that means I would need to be at least about 240 meters away from them to be unlit in the open in this position. So, I know that I'm probably going to get spotted if I sit here. So, I just look around, and I see this tree. And I'm just, like, I'll give it a shot. So I'm going to knock the tree upwards towards the top of the hill. And then obviously sit in it. I think this tree is probably worth 25% KO just because of how sparse the leaves are. But I mean, it doesn't really matter because I'm talking about a difference about 50 or 40 or 50 meters for me to be unspotted, which is about 10 to 15% camo, probably, which means there's a, an EBR is going to show up here. Even if he had CVS, this tree would be worth at minimum 20%. Which means no matter what, if I'm covered by the tree, it's not possible for me to get spotted here. So this guy peeks the bush. These guys may not have 450 meters view range. I'm assuming one of them probably did. But either way, you get the point of what I'm trying to say. And... Come on. Here. That's actually bad. Here. So, I was talking about earlier, with the way the trees work and the checkpoints. This tree... Obviously, these holes don't exist. This this hole has the exact same camo percentage as this these leaves do. So, these the sprites for these are not as complicated as you think. They're probably going to be something like this. So I know because I have a checkpoint here, 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 and my turret's obviously covered. That if I put the sprite between me or between my checkpoints and the enemy, that as long as these three points here are covered, then I'm not going to be spotted. And, I mean, it probably worked. Like, I, surely to God, one of these guys had 450 meters range. There's no way they didn't. And I get lit as soon as I leave the tree, which is right here. 
I get three seconds for six cents. It was off. I probably got spotted as soon as I left the tree. And that's that's basically the whole example. All right, so now let's talk about one of the reasons that I actually kind of really got interested in this. And it is people talking about broken bushes in the game. Now, don't get me wrong, World of Tanks has a lot of problems with it. But I do not think spotting mechanics are broken in any way. You can argue that maybe they're stupid. That's up to you. It doesn't even matter. But there's two examples I want to talk about. One is the one line steps bushes, these ones. So, you know, you see so many people, they cross H1, like, oh, there's a bunch of heavy tanks here. I'll bush up, I'll shoot them. Right? Makes sense. It's really hard to use two bushes here. So a lot of people, they will just use a single bush and, like, oh my god, I'm 50 meters behind the bush. And I fired, how did I get spotted? Well, let's say somebody here is 450 meters in range. Let's say, let's be extremely generous. You have 10% camo after firing. Most tanks would dream about having 10% camo after firing. So let's see. We'll use the equation from before. What did I say? 10% plus the 50% because you're 50 meters behind the bush. All of a sudden, someone. Even if you had 10% camo after firing, if someone is sitting over here with 450 meters in range, let's see how far this is on the stress case. Let's say, fuck it, let's say you're 25 meters behind the bush. It's nuts. 200, what was it? 210? 210. Look at it. 210. Somebody up to here is going to be spotting you if you fire behind a single bush here. And that is if you have a generous 10% camo after firing. People always talk about, oh my god, these bushes are so broken. No, they're not broken. You just don't understand how the spotting mechanics work. The second example I want to talk about, which I hear even more than the Stabs bush. Actually, I don't, I don't know if it's more, but it would be Fish Bay. Probably seen this before, heard this before, experienced it. It's these bushes right here. Everybody talks about, oh my god, they're so broken. No, they're not. Let's say, let's be even more generous than last time. You've got 30% camo while moving. We're getting into like light tank moving camo values there. If someone over here has 450 meters V range, that means you're going to get spotted at about 80 meters past proxy. What is that? 130 meters? Let's see. This is 130 meters on the map. Like, you, if you move anywhere in here and somebody catches a checkpoint, you're just going to get spotted. That's why it, it's really nice to play here in light tanks because you really won't get spotted. But medium tanks, heavy tanks, literally anything. You're going to get lit through these bushes. They're not broken. That's just the way it is. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this. All right, now, uh, there's just a couple more things I want to say. None of this is really that important. But there's, there's some misleading numbers in the game. Like, I know the grill has this. I, there are some others. I don't remember what they are. But it's this field mod right here, where you're either choosing between 6% concealment after firing or 2% V-range. And this may seem like a no-brainer, like, oh my god, 6% concealment after firing? But no, this, this, these percentages are not equal to this. You're not adding 6 to this number. What you're doing is you're adding 6% to this number. So I, got, I have no crew in the grill, so ignore these numbers. But 1.25% after firing, you choose this field mod, oh my god, 1.3%. So this, the number you're adding... Or concealment after firing is so unbelievably minuscule there is absolutely no point at all to choose this over view range this i mean your range you're probably going to get maybe like 10 maybe 15 meters off of this but no matter what it's going to be more effective than what you're getting for concealment after firing it just doesn't it just makes no sense another field mod i want to talk about it doesn't really it literally doesn't matter that much i just figured i'd mention it anyway I know the Panzerdragon has it. There's some others that probably have it. Basically, like, using to boost one side of CVS. So there's either uh, additional minus concealment behind foliage or additional uh, minus concealment when they're moving. So because you cannot change field bots mid-game, it's almost always going to be more beneficial to take additional minus concealment behind foliage. Because I already talked about how uh, concealment behind, or concealment moving enemy vehicles is not really as important as people make it out to be. So Additional subtraction of concealment of foliage is just obviously going to be better for most scenarios. I mean, you can you really can choose whatever you want. It's not going to make that much of a difference. But I figured I, could, I would use this most of the time. Uh, one thing I want to say, 
is when I mentioned I mentioned max range earlier, and you know when pe most people say max range, they mean 445 meters, which kind of misleading. But I mean, if you know what it means, then it's not really that misleading. It's basically just the max distance that you can spot a tank. So it doesn't matter how much range you have. If somebody is actually funny enough, you cannot spot somebody at 445 meters. They have to be 444 or less meters away from you. Uh, this is the same with the concealment values. So if you are the exact same distance away from a tank that you need to spot them, you won't spot them. They have to be at least one meter closer than that. So one other thing I think I should mention is the dis where the tank location is. So this is a picture of two face looking IS-7s. The enemy tank is seven meters away from me. So tank position is calculated from center mass. So funny enough, I mean, it, this really doesn't matter, but you could, in theory, your dynamic view range port could technically be probably around 440, maybe even less meters away from the closest checkpoint of a tank. But because the distance between your center mass and their center mass is 445 meters, you cannot spot them. So, I mean, it really, it doesn't matter at all, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, one thing that is actually useful with knowing center mass is where your tank's position is. Is this other screenshot? Here, this tank is 51 meters away from me. It means you cannot proxy me. It doesn't matter because there's nothing between us, obviously. But theoretically, if there was a building between us right here, then if I wanted to kind of dance around this guy proxy range wise, then you can look at the icon on the mini map, and as long as your proxy ring doesn't touch the center of the icon, then you're not going to get proxied by them because center because it's obviously calculated by center mass, then uh, the center mass of the tank would be about here, and as long as your proxy ring doesn't touch it, then you're not going to get proxied. So it's kind of it's it can be important sometimes if you kind of like if the meters really count and you really cannot get proxied by somebody, then it could be useful. But it's kind of just good to know. One last thing I think I should mention. I mean, if you got this far in the video, uh, it should be pretty obvious. But one thing that goes around is that uh, view range past 445 meters just cuts in the camo. And it should be pretty obvious at this point, but the reason that's the case is because obviously if you're taking the same percentage from a larger number, then the distance left over is going to be greater, and the distance being left over is the spotting distance, so it just it makes sense and it's pretty simple. Um, honestly, if you got this far in the video without dying of boredom, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. I will catch you on the flippity flop.